What's up, dudes? This what is, up? <laughs> this is the Totally Games Cast episode 14. I think scoot. that's right. But uh, we've got a lot of normal video game shit to share with y'all. I always say exciting, but I don't. I don't know. Is it's it exciting? Is it, is it yeah. exciting? Okay, okay. It's as the long future as... of video games. Man. Oh, dude, it's the future. I gotta take off this hobo hat. Hobo hat? Okay. Hobo you gotta let it flow, dude. Yeah. Like your flow, flow. I mean, if you're gonna grow it, you it's gotta like, flaunt it. You know what I mean? It's that not like great me. here today. But... No, it's good. It's what are we talking about? What are we talking about? We got lots of good stuff on here, though. Yeah. So I guess uh, Sony to buy Rockstars. Google announces Google Stadia or Stadia. Stadia. For so sure. it's like the plural way of saying stadium. Okay, that's kind of, yeah. Uh, Nintendo's Nindies event earlier today. Okay, okay, I didn't even see that. Apex Battle Pass release. Tons of Apex news. You know that's the only game I'm playing right now, so definitely had to bring it out. There's tons of stuff. Season 1 Battle Pass just got released. That new uh, legend. I almost said hero or champion, which would not be right. <laughs> Neither would be right. Yeah. There's some Oculus stuff, but let's just kick it off with that Rockstar rumor. So this happened last week, right after we had recorded, uh, and it was all about like a weird, like one of those like, situations where it's like, Oh, the the reporter saw the notes on the bar napkin. Yeah, dude, like the most random hearsay shit ever. Yeah, I know yeah. What you mean. So basically, what happened was a reporter from Market Watch, which now I know not to not to not trust them, but just to like watch their stuff a little closer because he reported that a stockbroker, a, a prominent stockbroker, had inside info about, uh, he had like a note on a note card or something. It was like, it's like one of those situations and that said that Sony was in back room board talks of purchasing Rockstar. Sounds for, shady. Dude. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, dude, or not Rockstar, excuse me, that's in- incorrect, of, of purchasing, uh, I think it's Take-Two Inter- Interactive. Which is the publisher of Rockstar and a whole bunch of other games. So oh, Rock- so it's even higher up than Rockstar. Yeah. So it's like the subsidiary of Rockstar. Yeah. Then okay, I didn't even know that Rockstar had a higher up company. That's interesting. Yeah. So that would be like NBA 2K Live and all those games too. Sure. Yeah. So they were in backroom boardroom talks <laughs> for 130 dollars a share, which would equate to about 13.7 billion dollars. Lots of moolah, but not as much moolah as as one would assume, right? I mean, the, thirteen billion. But like one of the big, like Fox, Fox just was bought today. Like it was just like actually went through at twelve o two a.m. for seventy one point something billion. Sure, twenty I mean, first century Fox. That's like a a news station. You know what I well, mean? Well, it was like, all their. It was their entertainment subsidiary. Wow, too. Like, that all. Well, of it? no, not the news station. It was oh, just the entertainment. So like X Men, okay. The Simpsons is sure. now. Owned by Disney? Yeah, no, it's Psycho. Everything's owned by Disney at this point. So we got Marvel, we have yeah. uh, Fox. It's kind of crazy how much shit they're buying up. But, but the, so what, like, that's why I wanted to bring it up is because, like, you juxtapose that 71 billion to this 13.7. Obviously, that's still sure. a lot of money. But when you think about, like, Rockstar Games making billions of dollars on every game they ever put out. Do they make billions per game? Like I mean, I mean they're big titles, I'm sure. But GTA like, Five for sure. I guess maybe not every game, but I just foresee them making billion a billion dollars per game. I mean, Rock, Red Dead Redemption Two has already sold like 50 million copies, 45 million copies, or something crazy. Uh, anyway, though, this was all hearsay. This is all bull crap because Sony came out on Monday, uh, or I guess this is also pretty interesting. The the this spiked. Uh, take two's like uh, shares five percent. Yeah. Which when you're talking about billions of dollars, guys, that's a lot of money. Uh, so anyway, Sony confirmed this isn't happening. Something interesting about this confirmation though is that they never ever ever comment on rumors or speculation, right? Yeah. But for them to come out and be like, "Hey guys, this is not happening," like yeah, just no. say it straight up. That's how you know. Like, it, I think that it was important because it's obviously spiking stocks and affecting people's like well-being and stuff. Yeah. So I think that it was good that Sony actually came out and made an announcement to like kind of quell the rumors because like an a unquelled rumor is bad shit. You know what I yeah. mean? Like if it goes wild, you know how the internet be these days. Yeah. Like I mean, they said uh, Cuphead's coming to Switch or whatever, and everyone's like, Cuphead's gonna be the next Smash character. And it's just like <laughs> I know. All, like it's just rumors just go wild on the internet. That's so days. funny. We should hop into the Nintendo stuff next, though. Uh, that was a great yeah, segue sure. there. Uh, so that's funny that you said though about how everyone's like, oh, Cuphead being in Smash. 
Firewatch. I don't know if you saw. There was a GIF or like on in the in the Nindies event. They were like, okay, all these awesome Nintendo Nindies are on sale right now on the eShop, and it was like Firewatch and ukulele or not, yeah, ukulele. Okay. So like on a white backdrop, which was like, oh my god, Smash ukulele. You know, like a banjo like ripoff because it's made by old banjo developers. Still, oh. it looks like a lot of fun. I would definitely love to play it, but not for forty bucks. And then Firewatch is like that walking simulator that I loved. It's by um, the same group that I don't. It's not coming in my head. Someone in the chat or in the YouTube comments can can uh, tell me. But anyway, uh, it was on that white backdrop, and it was like those two characters are coming to Smash. Yeah, like, right. It's just like the internet runs with it. <laughs> yeah, no shit, dude. Like always to Smash too when it's involved in Nintendo. It's like uh, instantly gonna be the next smash dlc but uh so what happened at the nindies earlier today? i didn't get a chance to watch it live because i my lunch just didn't work out i had like a meeting and stuff i usually try to watch those like live at work and like adjust my lunch because my manager manager is awesome that way but uh a ton of games were announced like there's a web can you actually just go to the ign article because sure. Um, like I said, I wasn't able to watch it, but I did get to check out some of the trailers and dude, there are some cool effing games coming up. So he's bringing up the Nindies and yeah, right here, that top one, 18 right highlighted, uh, games. So first and foremost, the first game there was Cuphead guys. Cuphead was once an Xbox exclusive now coming to the switch. I told you this last year when you were playing it. That if Cuphead had come to the, was on the Switch, I would be playing it too. And this is where I'm going to be buying it, definitely. Yeah, this is a 10 out of 10 game. I yeah. love Cuphead, but uh, not interested in replaying it so much. So I think it would be a really fun game to play with like somebody for a, an hour or two. Oh, true. Until Actually, you get, I forgot like, it's co-op. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, if you want someone to play through it with, like, I'll... I'll steamroll that game <laughs> yeah for sure so my friend pedro i have to hit can you hit play on this sure um, this... let me put it on oh yeah yeah for sure watching. okay well they were just watching us be dorks there. well okay. we were talking about what was on here so shout out to jonathan dornbush for <laughs> yeah i know that means that then we might have to watch a damn ad okay <laughs> probably oh it's on stretch dress it's gonna be an ad Oh, no, it's not showing the stretch for us. Nice, dude. Wow, that's smart. <laughs> so you guys are watching an ad for Division, which I don't care about. So we won't watch more than just this one, to be honest, because you had to be logged in on IGN.com uh, to not deal with that. But I this looks like... Secret secret the violence, violence, but these are bad people. Bad people that need to be You're going to get some echo, because we so have get crazy. omnidirectional let's get sound now. Let's get... Well, you can turn it. Bananas. Down. So it looks like like Max Payne aerial gunfire gunplay, jumping off of enemies. It looks so cool, dude. Have you ever did play Max Payne? This is really really close to it. Yeah, like even that sick. backwards jump looked like it. My initial gut reaction was like, oh, I don't really care about a side scroller right now, but this looks fantastic. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I I'm, I agree. I mean, I played so much Dead Cells last year, and the new DLC is supposed to be coming out later this month or later this summer, I should say. So I'll be playing it again. But this is like in the same vein where it's like just hopefully I can get some cooler guns than just the SMGs, you know, light machine guns here. Like it would be really cool. Okay. Oh, then him yeah, with yeah. That, hit him with that kick, son. And then blows that up, yeah, and jumps right through the <laughs> basketball hoop. So this was just one of like the close to 20 games that were announced. Uh, this game being uh, my friend Pedro, and there's a couple other things that dropped. Uh, the Stranger Things three game, the game got a, oh, okay. got a release date for July 4th, which just so happens to be the same date that the season three comes out. Oh, okay. It looks like a great game. It looks like it will be like fun. I don't really care that much about existing IPs generally, like movie spin-offs or show spin-offs. Yeah, not my style <laughs> of thing. I don't think that that will translate very well into a game, personally. Yeah. But, you know, because the murder mystery stuff... Like, what's cool about Stranger Things is, like, the mystery behind it. You know what I mean? Like, right. um, not the fact that it's, like, a super action-packed show. I don't know. Yeah, and then the last notable mm -hmm. being Cadence of Hyrule. I don't know if you've ever heard of the Cadence games or the Crypt of the Necro Dancer games, but it's I've a heard rhythm. Of the Necro Dancer. Oh, you have. That's oh. a roguelike, right? Yeah. Okay, okay. And it's like rhythm based. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know that. It was kind of get me like sick to my stomach watching the trailer <laughs> uh, during my work, but like because you hop. 
like, and then the enemies will look like we're hopping with you. So, like, when you move one oh, space so up. Oh, so old school dungeon crawling where it's, like, when you move, yeah. everything in the dungeon gets to move, too. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. And so, actually, though, this is Cadence of Hyrule Edition. Hyrule being the Legend of Zelda, of course. So this is going to have some Zelda, being like in the Zelda-rich world, you're going to be able to play as Link and Zelda. That looks really cool. That is what is the internet's freaking out about today after this Nindies event. So cool that they could announce something on Monday. Two days later, we got Wednesday, we have this Nindies event. Uh, and then just they're showing off all these cool like smaller games. Yeah, no, definitely. For like a Nintendo <coughs> Direct or like... That was a, a direct, right? It's or, a Nintendo Direct Nindies yeah, thing. It's I like mean, the same kind of thing. That's sick that the small games get this kind of like advertising, you know, and hopefully they get a lot of freaking money and dollars for it. Right. I mean, I'm 100% going to buy Cuphead, and I wouldn't doubt <laughs> I'm buying at least something else. Also, on the sale, there's Thimbleweed Park, Night in the Woods. There's, like I said, Firewatch and Ukulele. There's so many other great games out there uh, that, I mean, I know I'm going to be spending some money. <laughs> <laughs> In the e in the e shop, yeah, nothing's so, really jumping out at me. Maybe that shooter game. I don't even. What was that called again? We my were, friend Pedro. My friend apparently Pedro. he like carries around a talking banana. Okay, dope. Actually, something, <laughs> something weird about it. But there's a bunch of other ones on that list too that uh, definitely recommend you guys go to that IGN article and check out that list. It's really cool. So let's move on. What do you want to talk about? You really want to talk about Stadia or so Apex? So we're still in. Nintendo World. Let's okay. talk about Smash really quick. So yeah, yeah. At this Smash tournament in uh, Jersey recently, um, a Smash player rage quits uh, because of an audience member. Um, the audience member was allegedly coaching wishes a pro player after and after a death. Oh, what was his name? Mars. Yeah. After a death, Mars stood up and walked away from the game. The judges t decided to restart. So Mars died. Yeah, because, and he thinks that like it had to do with the coaching. Yeah, okay. had to do with coaching. He stood up <clears throat> from the game, walked away, and then wishes continued to beat him down with Pokemon Trainer and throw him off the cliff for the second Elim. The judges decided to restart the match at two lives each, which eventually got reverted to two and one, with some damage on um, wishes to kind of like even it out and get it closer to the game state. Uh, that it was originally um, the player's Mars after the reset went on to win the game, but the crowd and everyone was totally deflated and the enthusiasm was totally gone from the scenario. So um, Mars won and he was the one that wasn't getting coached. I'm almost, I was in his corner, but I'd like to hear so your he, thoughts. So my thoughts on it is if you walk away from a professional match, no matter what, especially in a stadium scenario with people watching, you've lost. If yeah. you stand up and put your okay. controller down, you've conceded. It doesn't matter what you think cheating is going on. If the judges don't rule that, you've lost. I don't think that... They, so, Wishes went on to say that if you think that I'm being coached by an audience member, you're fucking out of your mind. You know what I mean? It's He's like, a professional player. Yeah, it's delusional thinking, you know. that, And it's a common trick. It was something to do with, like, a Zero Samus grappling on the side of the map. And it's, like, something that people know about. Oh. So it's not even, like, a big thing. See, when I read these notes, when I read the story, initially I'm, like, in Mars's corner. But I'm, I'm now I'm, like, okay, I'm getting more context. I'm understanding that it was something that all these pro Smash Ultimate players know what, how to do, right? Like, yeah, no, it's... I mean, even if it was, like, heckling, <clears throat> coaching, I don't see... I, I think that that's for the judges to decide before you put down your controller. You know what I mean? And I think... Had he played it out that way, the guy could have wishes might have been DQ'd if it was reasonable, and not people wouldn't think he's like a sore loser, which they could I think. Review the tape. Yeah, you know? exactly. Like, review the tape. It's like, oh, he's coaching him. It's like obviously at every turn he's like reacting to this person yelling. Uh, that would make sense, but I don't think that was the case. When I was watching League of Legends Championship, like. 2011, 12, thir mainly 11, 12, 13, probably. I would be watching it, like, all the world's games I could. Almost like these nerds out here doing March Madness right now. That's <laughs> starting up here soon. Dude, that's what I say, sports nerds. Yeah. They don't get the proper criticism that they deserve. Dude. Man, I've like, been, since I've been 15 years old, I've been saying that. We are, they are nerds, too. They're just nerds yeah, about. statistics, dude. They do more statistics than Magic players, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. actually, they're like. 
a 3.19 batting average. Yeah, like, oh, that's exactly, that's crazy. Yeah. Like, it, it, we don't even write down the statistics and magic. We're real nerds. We do that shit in our brain. We keep that shit locked in. Right. That's what I'm saying. We can count cards, okay? <laughs> yeah, motherfucker. We don't need no paper. We don't need no batting so, average. But what I, what I was trying to get at, I guess, like, was that when I would watch those professional players play, you could hear people yelling over the announcers, like, or like the, um, commentators the what is, what are they call play yeah commentators yeah okay like you could hear people like going no no go, go down and stuff like that what up dot <laughs> uh, but like all that kind of stuff like that's just part of it you get there you're gonna have nerves oh, yeah. man like, you, you got gotta... Brett Favre in the back and he's like got the ball and yeah. then he just like sets the ball down he's like there was someone out in the stadium <laughs> yeah. he's fucking coaching he's coaching the players uh, I can't play against this. I'm done. I'm uh, done. Until we, we need a reset, and you need to get that guy out of the stadium. Yeah. And that's actually what happened in this scenario, was the guy was ejected, and they continued with the Whoa. matches. You know, so The audience member was ejected. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of interesting. Like, imagine being the guy that gets kicked out of an eSports event. They don't even serve booze, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you got to bring in a flask, right? Well, duh. I mean, you're not going to go to an eSports event and not get blackout drunk dude that's all i gotta stay i always wanted to go to the worlds like for league and i could see myself going to like other tournaments too but i, I do i will say like whenever there's a uh when when there was like the pokemon worlds just like last august every august they have pokemon worlds i was watching that like i, I love competitive stuff like of course i'm not gonna like harp on these March Madness nerds anymore. Well, I mean, we're harping on them right now. But, I mean, <laughs> but we, we get harp. We're nerds, man. We're the most, like... We are yeah. harped on. We are yeah. harped on quite regularly. I'll agree with you there. But, yeah, uh, yeah. So where are we going now? Where are we going with Let's this? just go into straight into Apex. It's going to be a fat, juicy one because that's basically, like, a lot of what I've been playing. All that I've been playing the last week. I haven't played any Diablo 3 casually for you people out there. <laughs> Uh, so Apex Battle Pass got announced on Monday, Come came out yesterday on Tuesday morning, uh, noon I think Pacific time, includes all these like weapons, you, you're you better at talking about the Battle Pass I would say because you're so used to like... Sure, the, the systems t- and yeah. stuff, so, so if you could basically talk about there's a hundred tiers, um, as you gain experience you unlock more tiers, giving you rewards with skins, dances, whatever, um, weapon skins. I think that's pretty much it in the Apex quips, ones. But yeah, I but, don't think there's any dances, oh, quips, but like yeah, quips, definitely, yeah. yeah, definitely. So, um, that just came out today. Um, what what uh, exciting's in there for you? Like what are you looking at? I mean, dude, I I'm with Paul Tassi. He he's been somebody I actually just found with the Anthem stuff, I think. Pretty sure he was writing a lot about Anthem stuff. So just doing research for the show, he uh, does freelance or writes for Forbes about for gaming, right? Forbes, pretty good business, you know, uh, publication generally. Not, but like he comments on the business side about gaming stuff. Which, sure. So it's, it's not something I usually get from IGN, is what I'm trying to say. Anyway, he wrote uh, his thoughts on these specific skins and whatnot and like the loot box like quality yeah, I read the article yeah yeah and i was like i'm so with you dude basically i'm just to answer your question trey like it looked like the three main skins that you get when you buy the battle pass at level one it looks like they just got dipped in mud yeah no that's i laughed when i laughed out loud when i read that it's like the three main skins look like skins dipped in mud cracking me up yeah so my main problem well so they have new reactive skins that change as you reach kill platforms, so they're weapon skins, and I think that they had two for the Havoc, and they actually looked really cool, um, it, Like, and I'm not someone who would necessarily care about a weapon skin, yeah. because a gun's a gun's a gun, and if it's shooting lasers, it shoots lasers, but so basically as you get kills, it changes the appearance of the gun, mm-hmm. but the other side of that is that players unless they've unlocked that they can't even see it oh. so it's like you're trying to have this e and show off that you spent like $15 or whatever it is and then they can't even fucking see it the scrubs yeah. so the scrubs don't even know that they're being stomped by someone who has more money than them and like, so is that how it is though are you 100% sure like that's they can't what I read in the okay. um, uh I thought it was the Forbes article, but it might okay. have been something separate. That um, that would be silly. If that is the legit case, that would be here, extremely let me, I think it might silly. actually be a GameSpot article. Let me pull it up just to okay. be sure so that I'm not the... just. Um, but anyways... Okay, pretty- while you're looking for it, I'll, I'll go ahead and vamp. So, I bought, the, I bought it at that $9.50 range. I didn't want to pay that $28. 
Uh, and I got like the first, I didn't get like the first 25 levels unlocked because I thought that was part of the fun, you know, trying to unlock it. And I feel like I can get to 100 within the 90 days, but who knows. Uh, and I didn't also get that Octane, who also came out, the new legend. Uh, his passive is that Swift Man, where he's gonna gain like health or heal throughout the periodically, like gradually throughout the game. But his tactical, he has to lose 10% health to gain that 30% boost. Uh, anyway, with the other patch notes too, there's some cool stuff like Caustic, Pathfinder, and Gibraltar, those big, fat, juicy men. They uh, they got their hitboxes reduced finally, so it's not just because they're big guys; they're not going to get hit more and easily, more easily than versus like the smaller characters. And then Lifeline, Wraith, and Bangalore, my three mains, they got <laughs> nerfed uh, just slightly, just to deal with like their their uh, tactical ability and, and ultimate and whatnot. Did you find it over yeah, here? Yeah, no. I know. I okay. think it's somewhere like it's just like a random note in an article and. I swear I read it, so okay. I, I just I'm not making this up. I oh, also yeah, no. saw that there was a patch coming to the battle pass, so that it may have even since okay. been fixed. Yeah, because so that would be might... sick. Yeah, thick boys for sure. Dude. <laughs> well, I mean, the octane looks sick. Um, uh, one percent health all the time seems pretty strong. Like e even if like just not having to activate it is like a mindless passive, passive ability that's like really really strong because like during one of those longer fights that, that seems stronger than the drone even for the um, uh, medic or whatever yeah so. pa pathfinder can now grapple the zip lines which just makes sense like and it that sounds like a lot of fun since they like reduced his hitbox i might actually dive back into playing pathfinder he was like i think he was the second character i played as so, so i did wraith of course first because i that just matches my whole uh how I would play that game. I suck with her. Uh, and then I decided to pick up Pathfinder. Yeah, that'd be cool. It's interesting. Almost every good player I've seen that plays Pathfinder, though. Really? It's like really good. Interesting. They, like, um, High Distortion, when he was streaming Apex, he was he has great aim, and he was just uh, zip or grappling up and just shooting down on people all the time. How are you playing as him right now while you're, like, watching our games cast <laughs> and commenting in the chat.xp? You are crazy. <laughs> He's just leaving his uh, teammates uh, hanging. He's just one yeah. of those guys that's, like, standing there <laughs> like, uh... <laughs> Yesterday I was getting... Last night I was getting carried so hard on my first game of the night. I only played for, like, an hour, hour and a half. But uh, this guy, like wrecked two full teams by himself and then he comes back and heals me because I had like died I, I put like a considerable amount of damage down and then he wrecked another full team so he's at nine kills now and I again went down he came and healed me again <laughs> and he healed our other third teammate who then like rage quit as soon as he like <laughs> was about to heal him like because he healed me first or something but this kid was amazing uh, he actually added me because I was like never use my mic ever in this game because like the pinging system's good obviously you're gonna do much better if you like communicate and I turned on my mic for this guy because he's like anybody have shotgun ammo or like ammo 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 and he didn't tell me what he needed Come to find out, because I asked the question, what kind of ammo he needed. <laughs> he needed a light ammo, actually, not shotgun. So, yeah, I actually turned my mic on. Lydia, like, left the room. She was so annoyed, because I was just, like, communicating real well. I'm like, did 16, did 60 damage, uh, broke armor. Like, I was just Tell doing... Tell Lydia the deal, dude. <laughs> That's making me angry right now. <laughs> Man having fun, talking with his teammates. No, but I'm being, like, super annoying. She can't hear anything. Yeah, I know. Because, like, you have the headset, you know? Like... I, I'm just trying to be dramatic. Uh... <laughs> So let's just get back into like a few more things about this uh, this nice, awesome like season one. Well, it's not so nice, awesome. Like I said, like the the hundred tier thing is kind of I didn't didn't see a single thing in there that I thought was super cool, but whatever. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, like there is season one, right? Like I feel like season one tiers for the battle pass for Fortnite probably weren't that awesome compared to like something later on. Uh, yikes! So like the end of the battle pass is the Black Knight of the first season and that's like one of the most popular skins to oh. date. so it's like i don't know it was a really honestly the battle pass season one was pretty much just like night oriented and they've had pretty good themes but i think there's like a huge difference in a third person game battle pass and a first person shooter game true because like you don't spend a huge amount of time looking at your character yeah. like and but in a third person game you're spending a huge amount of time looking at your character especially in like these games where you're running a lot yeah. you know um 
I don't know. I I can't, couldn't see myself buying the Apex Battle Pass, even if I was hugely into the game. Like, yeah. I mean, it's a free game. You're giving money to EA. I, I don't know. It's not even... That's true. <laughs> but it is your... You were saying the the other company that's good, take not Take-Two. Respawn. Respawn. Yeah, yeah so, so Respawn I mean, developed it. They came out with the Titanfall games, and like everybody loved them, <laughs> so... And everyone loves them, I should say, online. So, yeah, I, I'm supporting them at least. That's uh, that's good. Uh, I'm going to get Octane as soon as I get enough in-game currency. Yeah. I just spent 12000 on Mirage. I'm at like 10800 so a few more wins. Uh, I'm just a big proponent of free-to-play. And, like, yeah. um, can't you earn currency enough to buy the Battle Pass? Or is that a special I think you EA? have to pay for it. You have to pay for it. So you can't buy the Battle Pass in Fortnite, can you? With currency? In-game currency. So they gave it to people for free this time. Oh, wow. So it was because Apex came out and they're trying to, like, win back (laughs) some people, you know. Um, But if you did these challenges right when Apex came out, you could get the battle pass for free. Oh, dude, you bought Caustic? I was about to buy Caustic because I want to get a win with a defensive character and I don't want to play as Gibraltar. I know that's, like, your home dog, but I I can't get down with him. I don't like his skill set. I haven't been playing him. I was playing um, the medic the last time. Yeah, Lifeline. That's my number one. I have like 150 games with med, uh, <clears throat> Lifeline. But yeah, dude, they yeah they buffed his gas. He can put it down in his Nox like gas canister things. What up, Doc Smog? What's up, Smoggers? And they also uh, put it down, so he can put them down quicker, I believe, and pick them up if they haven't been activated. Uh, yeah, that's awesome, dude. Yeah, Caustic looks fun. I was just about to buy him, like I said, but now I'm gonna save for Octane first. Still, like, I still think Caustic and Mirage were really good characters to be, like, the first that you can actually purchase. Uh, but I love Mirage. He's my second most played right now. He's just a lot of fun. I love, like, his ability, like, his tactical refreshes every 11 seconds. So it's really, you can spam it all game. So all right. the last couple things about Apex. Did you hear about this? This came out, like, right after our show last week. Ninja got paid, allegedly, a million dollars to play Apex during its first week. Can you believe that? It's psycho. Like 40 it, hours a week, that's 25k an hour. It's psycho. 40 hours a week, yeah. It's like it it's really interesting. It's the world is changing so fast and like I think that Apex and EA were really ahead of the curve on this by buying off so many influencers cuz Ninja wasn't the only one that they he bought. There was like right. Tim Shroud. the Batman, yeah. Shroud. They he, they bought off basically every major influencer and I think that it's reasonable that it was this amount because it was supposed to be double what he was making in a, a week right? a month yeah yep. sure he makes like 500k a month but that <clears> still <throat> seems like too much in my eyes it's not wrong as long as they're they're uh advertising correctly as long as they're like saying hey like this stream is sponsored or, like streams this week guys they're sponsored as long as you're making it like known you know see i didn't watch enough of the streams to know how clear it was i know that i saw a few of the streams had hashtag ad at the end of the title which to me is kind of like a small indicator, which but enough. But people do but that online. I, I think it's like a really sellout move, in my opinion, uh, that you would be willing to... So, I mean, if you're having fun with the game and getting paid for it, that's great. But if you're willing to, like, not have fun to make money and, like, also put your viewers in the, like, way of that, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. in the way of you not having fun with a game, it's very sellout to me. I don't know. I was watching Shroud the first week or second week it came out, and he was saying, like, I'm still playing this game because it's so much yeah, fun. Yeah, exactly. Like, so, like, he, that makes sense. Yeah. Like, and is awesome. But when you cross that line, it's not fun. Right. So, uh, at the end of the day, Apex, the success of that, and Anthem. Anthem's the second highest selling game uh, of the whole year. Just really? behind Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, but with those two being so successful, EA's stock has gone up 16%. So we're talking hundreds of millions of dollars as a billion dollar company. And uh, so with that $1 million on Ninja, that marketing money, it, it ended up working out. Yeah, no, definitely. I bet it paid dividends because every. I, I just want to know if this would have happened without that. Like, Dude. would the popularity of the game be anywhere near where it's at now without that advertising. This what do you guys think in chat? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and dude, <laughs> Dot, you are so right. Shroud is nutty to watch. We were just watching him right before this. I don't think we saw him kill anybody. We saw but... him kill no one. He was running in the storm yeah. and using med kits. <laughs> it was pretty dope, dude. He was playing as Octane, though, and I learned something watching him. I was telling this to Trey. Like, 
the first couple weeks that this game came out, I was playing it like very lightly, but I was mainly watching him. I was like learning a lot about the game just now, like with Octane. If you put the the bounce pad, yeah, the jump pad or whatever, like on the hill, and you slide down, and you're going faster than you would be normally running. You're gonna bounce farther, and that's what he did in the game. So it's just like it's cool to watch these professional players. Just kick ass. Yeah, and it's cool that they have got uh, cool physics in the game too, like that, that actually takes into account that like stuff. And like you can slide and ramp off of shit and makes for good clip moments. And they put the, those launch pads like in the game on like this su Saturday, Sunday, Monday by market, and you were able to just like play as any character and jump on them. And I was just doing that because they were probably just <laughs> testing it out and making yeah, sure. Yeah, they wanted to make sure it worked. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, they carry momentum, dude. It's super cool. So if you are falling, so say you jump from a spaceship or something, and then you like place it right before you hit, you bounce up super high. I don't know if you can place it in midair. I'd have to check that out. But that would be sick. Because that's like a Fortnite trick. Where yeah. you're like falling, and you can now place like a bounce pad under you to stop you from dying. But oh. like that's different from... What if you're not quick enough? Uh, so they made it one button, so you can't like not be quick okay, enough. Okay, okay. Like, God, dude, Epic is on it with making it friendly. Uh, so, yeah, that, that was just interesting, I think, that Ninja could have earned that much money. But go him. I'm happy that he's making all this money. He seems like a decent dude overall, except he won't play video games with girls. But, you know. <laughs> Who cares? I know, I know. <laughs> so, also, last thing about Apex. I thought this was really, really cool. If you're good at Apex Legends, you can go to college with a scholarship. You can you can go to college for, not free, but I think it's like $5,000 per semester, which is about what my company I work at is willing to give you so that's a lot of money um one-time scholarship for prospective students attending becker college in massachusetts and uh they partnered with team genji and helix esports i thought this was super cool i just had to mention like it just re reminds me of the jss playing magic growing up like playing magic gathering could earn they earned me almost two grand like five hundred dollars for one uh, win in five or in a thousand for another for college. And I legit cashed in on that when I went back to school in 2013. So it was really fun, uh, and I think that's neat. And then this year, and then if you can be on the Becker, Becker College team and play, compete this fall. Nice, dude. I'm Along about to go the, get me some scholarships. Yeah, son, dude, I'm going back to college, son. <laughs> but you're a third person shooter player. Yeah, no, I'm, I can't. I'm not even gonna try. <laughs> so. Uh, what else you want? We want to chat about. Do do we need to talk about this stadia? I mean, it's just bogus, right? It's not gonna do anything. It's really? not gonna change the world. <laughs> okay, that's okay. <laughs> sarcasm. Yeah. I like to sarcasm. <laughs> so at GDC, we all knew this was happening, and we all knew this was coming. Google announces debuts, what they've been working on, who, they, why they've been sniping all these gaming execs. Um, Nate Ahern, Jade Raymond, all these like gaming execs that I actually have followed their work throughout the years. Nate Ahern just came from, he went from uh, my, Microsoft over to Google for this. Uh, but anyway, this is a platform, guys. This is not a bo box. And I thought that was hilarious. Next gen isn't a box. That's what they said in their keynote and that is so like I thought that was Nintendo that had said that so I was like thinking like oh fucking Google's fulfilling Nintendo oh. prophecy but it, it makes more sense now I thought that was funny because like have you guys if you guys uh, have watched Silicon Valley uh, they have like a whole season based around building the best box and like everybody that knows anything is like dude we don't want to build the box we want to build like the infrastructure like the the cloud essentially. Yeah. Anyway, that show is hilarious. If you're watching it, watch it on HBO. It's fun as hell. Yeah, Trey, you need to get into Apex. Dot X. Dot X. And I want you know. Well, no, I'll play anytime okay. someone invites me. Except Dot always invites me when I'm playing Fortnite. Like he fucking doesn't understand how it works, man. If I'm playing Fortnite with Steve, I can't play. There's there's a hierarchy to games, dude. And Fortnite always lies at the top of the hierarchy. So if anyone's playing Fortnite with me. I can't play anything else. It's just how it works. It's interesting that you'd say that some of the strangers have been assholes, Dot, because I'm honestly, on PlayStation 4 at least, I know it's different from uh, console to PC to console. Uh, I've had I've dealt with like a lot of cool people. There's only one time where I was like, there's two people chatting. They're like clearly best friends. They're probably duoing together. Yeah, yeah. And they were like calling me like the F A G word, like all that stuff, just because like I took their, I landed where they landed. But like I was pretty new at the game. This was like a week ago, and I like 
or two weeks ago now, a few weeks, I guess. But, like, I land, I wasn't, like, breaking off, like, on my own. Because, you know, you can split and stop yeah. following, like, a ways up. I wasn't doing that. I was just landing with everybody because I'm new at this game. Uh, clearly now I don't do that. But I took their gun. And they just called it, started calling me the F-A-G word. Well, yeah, I mean. They called me. If the shoe yeah. fits, I mean. <laughs> I'm just messing with Bundle you. of sticks. But, so. I mean, like, so in, so in, in those games, if I get someone without a mic, we instantly start cannibalizing them. So, like, and we just start talking mad shit to them, calling them idiots, like, because they can't defend themselves. But I have a mic, and it has, like, a logo showing I have my mic on my head, but, like, I'm not going to talk when it's, like, 10 p.m. at night, and, like, my fiance is trying to sleep in the next room. Oh, that, that, that's the difference between you and me, because Gail could be sleeping right there and be like, fuck you, you piece of shit, motherfucker, you're going to call me a fat... I will not... <laughs> deal with that because that, that the onslaught that will come at me like the next day or whatever is not worth it I got in so much trouble one day because Gail was taking like a quiz and she had warned me she was taking the quiz and when I stream I get heated I just get really heated <laughs> and like I started yelling and after she gets done with it or whatever and is really mad at me because I was screaming her entire quiz you know how it be. I know how it be. I know how it be. But back to Stadia. That was a derailment. Oh, yeah. it def was. But hey, we're good. So Stadia <laughs> controllers have two Stadia-specific functions. You can capture with one button. And uh, you can also... has a Google Assistant button. If you haven't seen the Stadia controller, do you think you pulled it up? Yeah, you pulled it up. Dude, it is. It is so much better than that original like mock-up that was released like two weeks ago. There's like a whole bunch of memes online, like uh, you versus the guy that whatever you know the, that oh, meme. Oh yeah, like you can copy my homework, but oh yeah, that kind. Yeah, and then like look how pretty that controller is, man. Yeah. And if you if you want to look to exhibit A here, they went through the mic Microsoft way of doing X at the and then Idiots. Y. Nay, the A. Hey, <laughs> we read from left to right in America. Not no, it's Y here. X up here. Oh, but that's because savages. the Japanese re read from right to left. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's history <laughs> at this point. You, you, oh, my God. The, the controller is gorgeous in my eyes, though. Um, but it's okay. It just doesn't look like you have anything to grab on. I like I like the Xbox controller because there's, like, something behind it. You know sure. what I mean? I think that's I one of the most ergonomic controllers. It's uh, my favorite. I actually like the uh, Switch Pro controller mm -hmm. a lot. Like, you've got some heft to it. Like, hold on. Here we go. Perfect. It's like, it's got, well, maybe just from this angle, it looks exactly the same. <laughs> it looks like it has no No, there, No, there's some junk, chunk in the back. There's, there's some, some junk, junk in, in that the, trunk. Do you think there's some junk in this I trunk? I have it, yeah. Okay, yeah. There's definitely. It, you but have just it. in the picture, it looks like there's no junk in the trunk. What's up, Van Wedge? What's happening, Van? We're just looking at these thick-ass controllers up in here. Uh, what's your favorite controller? Actually, GameCube is probably my favorite controller of all time. People say that. It's definitely not my favorite. It's got favorite. some heft. Look at this junk. Oh my god. It's a great controller, but... It's so thick, and you have full grip here. PS2 is trash, bro. PS2 is... Isn't that the same as the PS4 controller? PS, it's the same as the PS3, really. But, but then what's the difference between the PS4 and the PS2? The PS4 is way different. They have the concave knobs... Uh, they also uh, have like way better triggers. I'll those say. were not those were not triggers, dude. Those were oh disgusting. Those were just buttons. <laughs> Both. Oh, you are insane, Van. PS4 is way better. I can actually play a video game on my PlayStation. Yeah, the PS4 PlayStation 3 also weighed horrible. like nothing. No. Yeah. Look dude. at this. This looks bad. You are you own it. <laughs> I know, I own it. It looks bad though. Like, Let's get back on track. So Stadia is a platform. It's not a box that you're gonna be buying, it's a platform that you're gonna be subscribing to or buying v games through, like the Epic Store, or like Steam really, like the big competitor. And uh the the appeal about this is is that you're gonna be able to play any game on anything. So like on my phone, I can play Assassin's Creed Odyssey. So you're running all of your uh, games to the cloud right. and then back to your exactly thing. yeah. Okay. And uh, they are running these on like obviously their server farms and their servers are able to put out 10.7 teraflops of power. Which if you want to compare that, the PlayStation Pro. 
can do four point shut up. <laughs> what? I was just I was I you're about, at his thing. Oh, I thought you were about to go into your my computer can do No, I don't care. I don't okay. care. I mean this is good that for what it is. I mean like So they put that number on the screen. They put four point two teraflops for a PlayStation 4 Pro. They put Xbox One X, six point zero teraflops. Combine that, that's ten point two, simple math, right? Well that's less than the ten point seven teraflops of processing power that the the stadia can do or like the cloud there's one gpu sending to you for sure that makes Um, sense i don't know i don't obviously understand like the science behind a teraflop i just know more the bigger the number the better of course the higher fidelity the water will look more realistic the graphics overall will be smoother less um less chopping and all that kind of stuff but well, so my experience with things like this, like I used uh, the Nintendo or the not Nintendo, um, the PlayStation um, app that you can play your PlayStation remotely. So like on my computer down here, so I can stream. And there is input delay, and like I can't help but think there's gonna. I mean, they're gonna have a lot of problem solving to do with this because it can't be instant. I'm as sure. I'm almost sure that they've thought this through. Oh right? yeah, no, I know. I'm, I'm so sure. It's but like, I'm just like skeptical. Like, if your internet like bugs out for an instant, now you're having issues with playing the game. Like, you know what I right. mean? So now you're totally reliant on the internet as opposed to like mostly reliant on the internet. And what's crazier about this whole situation is apparently they can do 4K 60 frames per second. Yeah. What the heck? Yeah. They, uh, I just read today that some uh, you need that 25 megabit, megabits per second to at least do 1080p at 30 frames. So I currently have 100 uh, download, and I think I hover around 25 to 35 upload. Uh, so I could probably do 4K. Now, can I do 4K while somebody else is streaming in my house on 4K Netflix? I don't know. That's uh, that's gonna be something we have to figure out here coming up. But some other just really quick things, trying to not make this all about Stadia and Apex this week. But uh, Stadia Games and Entertainment now they have like a new first party developer within Google now called Stadia Games and Entertainment, uh, led by former Ubisoft and EA executive Jade Raymond. You may know her for her works on Assassin's Creed One through Three and Watch Dogs. Uh, Awesome games. I don't know if you played Watch Dogs at all, but it was a ton of fun. And they also showed all these really cool, neat tools that were part of this whole system. So I'm going to just kind of rattle them off and stop me if you, uh, or throw some comments in the chat if you want to chat about any of these specific tools that they're giving to developers in their developer kit. So Stream Connect, lossless split screen fidelity. Apparently, you can play split screen with up to like a million people and no, lose zero fidelity. So if you guys don't, no, on the console gaming uh, situation, like back, think back to Halo, like, or let's think back to Mario Kart on N64. Like they had to process four different people playing the game, so you would you would probably notice like the difference in the fidelity of the graphics or like anything really. Like you have to really zero in. Like on hit Halo, I remember playing Halo split split screen, just like the campaigns, and like you could tell the difference. Like I how? never thought about that ever in my oh. entire life. That's psycho. I but it's so true. Like yeah. I've, now that I'm thinking back, so we would have a big TV yeah. with Mario Kart on the four splits, and they would it would look horrible. Right. Absolutely wretched. Yeah. I was I never understood like I'm like the TV's big, the TV's good. Why is this happening? Yeah. I just never thought about that. They have That's to cool. output four different screens. Yeah. It, makes, you know? it totally makes sense. So it, apparently you won't lose anything now if you were to split screen. If you and I were to split screen. Anthem, let's just say, at like a really great looking game at 4K, 60 frames per second, if your internet could support it, would look exactly the same, which is super crazy. I know it's not that big of a deal to a lot of people out there, but that's a very cool uh, technology to have. State Share enables developers to let players share their world conditions, their positions, their score, their other factors, like their character's inventory, through just a single link. This is insane too, because... Anytime I'm just like, okay, uh, in Bloodborne, let's just, I'm just using random games as an example, or Diablo 3, I have this warrior with all these stats, and I can just share that, and you guys can just like see, like, a, I don't know, a PDF or like a website containing all my. Well, that already exists for games like Diablo and World of Warcraft, and yeah. Armory and stuff, where you can 
go to a link, you know. But yeah. I, I'm assuming this means that it's, like, simpler and, like, you just click your shit on your Stadia. And I know, like, for shared. League of Legends, they have, like, a uh, mobile fire and, like, stuff where you can share, like, your last ten games. Or, like, it keeps, yeah. it, like, imports all your game history. This is all built in within the game and, like, in the limit is up to, like, the developers. Uh, the biggest thing about, the biggest tool, I should say, was probably Crowdplay. Uh, that was revealed, which is allows YouTubers, anybody really, Twitch streamers, I'm assuming they're going to have their own like Stadia network or something, to invite viewers into their gameplay session with them. Oh, great. So I have to make another excuse why I don't want to play with viewers on stream. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, like I like playing with like uh, the cool people that I've grown to know, but there's like this thing on Twitch where people... Especially in oh, Fortnite, yeah. will be like, "Hey, dude, do you want to play?" And they'll like have never, you'll never have seen them in your entire life. And the guy will have like two thousand viewers, and they'll just be like, "You know what I mean?" Yeah, and, like, it's dude. just annoying. Or like but... sniping, or like four months, you sexy bitch. Thank you, brother. We appreciate you very much. How are you doing today, dude? But it, man, those, some of those tools are just really cool, and I'm excited to see how some game com uh, developers out there are gonna uh, build it. So. Couple other details launching in the UK, the US, and Canada, most of Europe later this year. More information to come this summer. I'm assuming E3, so we're talking June, guys. Uh, first couple weeks of, of June. Um, and they also have their Google I.O. event in May. Okay. So, but May's not really summer, at least not in my eyes. <laughs> not uh, spring. <laughs> so, my question is to you guys in the chat did you guys see the keynote? Did you, anything I say, was that interesting to you? Like how there, you can play on your phone. On your Android, whatever, uh, Samsung, Galaxy, whatever, you can stream 4K, 1080 or 4K, 60 frames per second. Any game that is available. Yeah, I mean, it, I think it's a huge step in technology, and I, I'm never gonna use it. <laughs> Fighters like I don't play games anymore. Yeah, I was, I was just, telling yeah. you about him. Oh, it, so no. it's, it's this guy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was like, we I was were talking about him. you before the show, man. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yep, and then Paul finishes the thought. Sounds like it's 2019. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, that's 100% right. Uh, but who is this for? Uh, a couple other questions I have. What are, what are the games? All they showed off was Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Gorgeous game, but it came out last year. Uh, Doom Eternal was also featured. Game that's coming out later this year. It Entertainment, I believe. Uh, yeah. That, who is it for, though? I mean, who's going to... Uh, subscribe to this service. Yeah, gonna be eat too much data to be affordable. That definitely is the argument. And we were talking before the show about uh, data caps and how much data that we actually have on our plans. And I have no clue. <laughs> yeah, man, uh, I have two terabytes. So I, I upgraded from one terabyte because the simple fact of me uploading my podcast at the time uh, and then also this show and then also... Tons of 4K streaming. I have a 4K TV, and we watch Netflix. And like I said, I have 100 megabits uh, download, which is not like anything crazy. It's not even fiber, which is a thousand. Um, but anyway, I had to upgrade to that two terabyte for an extra five dollars a month. But I was getting, getting like warning: you're gonna have to pay for a hundred or 250 more gigabytes for like ten dollars more a month. So I'm like, I'll just pay five dollars more a month. Never have that warning again. Never have to deal with like throttling or anything like that. Yeah. Um, to touch on what Paul said here, I, I think that it was cool that they showed that you could click on the game like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, look at the trailer, and then like then play a demo like directly without a download, which I thought was like a really cool feature because like even uh, Steam doesn't have that. You right. know what I mean? Which would just be like. Getting a demo for any game like really quickly would just be fantastic. You yeah, know? man. With this being a platform again, not a box, you can play on your phone while you're out and about upstairs, whatever, on the Wi-Fi network, a strong enough network, of course. Come downstairs, play on your computer, and have the same exact save state. Oh, my God, dude. That would play into my addiction of World of Warcraft <laughs> so bad, dude. I would be, like, driving, playing World of Warcraft. Like, I mean, I don't play right now, but, like... I remember times like wishing like I wish I could bring my computer upstairs while I shit and I would like considered buying a laptop just to be more oh efficient my with god my time. Trey like, I can't believe you shared this with your fucking well, homies. Well dude I mean it's important that you guys know that about me dude that I would if I could play World of Warcraft while shitting. 
Uh. <laughs> Ridiculous. Uh, yeah, I could download a ton of LimeWire, dude. That's what I download. Download a lot of viruses. Yeah, like, no dude. kidding. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, Rocket League, dude. I wish I was good at that game. <laughs> How long are my shits? It'd be a lot longer if I could play World of Warcraft. <laughs> yeah. uh, so another question is, where are those games? Like I said, uh, at the beginning of the show, they had like all these like icons, and it was just like to highlight gaming icons out there that are on board at least. I think there was like a couple things like teasing to Red Dead Redemption Two and GTA, and then there was one that I 100% knew it was Skyrim. It was an arrow to the knee. That's Skyrim, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I figured I was like, I was like a hundred percent sure, but I still was like doubting myself because I never played that game. Really? Yeah. Crazy. Just it's in my blind spot. I was playing a lot of League of Legends when that game came out, but yeah, might as well just wait for the next Elder Scrolls at this point. Oh yeah, but... for sure. Yeah, you know, it's been evolving and adapting to yeah. every platform. It's hit. Yeah, it's on Switch. Yeah, it's on. Is it on mobile yet? It's on PlayStation VR. <laughs> like you can play it in VR right well, now. Well, I mean, they put all of those kind of like open world games like uh, Fallout and stuff on there, right? Yeah. So, uh, Stadia, I think we're going to learn more this year. I mean, the big other question is, like, how much is this going to cost? People were saying online, like, the subscription is going to be $0 or something. You're just going to be buying games. They're going to earn money through the gaming. I, I have to assume they're going to be... They have these server farms, right? Like, they have to fund those. I, I couldn't even tell you, man. Like, I mean, Google already has, like, this huge revenue source of being Google, right? And, like, Google ads and whatnot. So, like, maybe they don't really need to, like, profit hugely off of it, just have a lot of traffic on it. Um, yeah. So, I, I don't know. It's hard to say, because, like, Google isn't, like, ridden with ads, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, like, not super laden with ads, like, if you know what I mean. We just did a Google search, and, like, at the top, there was one that had a Google ad on it. The rest was just, like, what Google is just... They probably pay to be towards the top, I'm sure, maybe. Yeah, that, that like, could have something to do with it. I, I don't know exactly how that works with just getting higher up the ranks on there. Yeah. Uh, I think Stadia... More to come this summer, guys. Like I said, we do this every Wednesday, so we're going to be chatting about Stadia a ton until it comes out. Another thing that was like shown off and like announced at GDC, I think we can just mosey on over to Oculus. Okay. They announced the Oculus Rift S... Okay, so what is it for people that don't know what it is at all? So Oculus is a VR headset. Sure. And you, you have to have a super strong, right now for the Oculus Rift, it's $350. Mm -hmm. You have to have a crazy strong PC to play it. This is a standalone version of that Oculus Rift S for $399. This is going to be not completely wireless, but it's going to be pretty close to being wireless too, which is a huge feature. Right now, if you put on PlayStation VR and you have like the move controllers and stuff, and all the wiring and everything, and like to power it, it just looks kind of silly in a way. Uh, I haven't actually worn a PlayStation VR, but I've just seen like videos of people playing. It looks kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, yeah, no, it looks weird. <laughs> yeah, so this is a huge upgrade from the 2016 Oculus Rift, like I said. has two new Oculus Touch controllers, and it's supposed to be out later this year. Uh, yeah, Assassin's Creed looks sweet on VR. All these games look awesome on VR. I was so close this fall because I bought a PlayStation 4 Slim uh, around like Thanksgiving Black Friday sale and uh, I was so close to buying a PlayStation VR as well 200 bucks at the time for like um, uh, I think Creed Boxing was actually one of the games in the bundle and Astro Bot and Moss all those like other games are getting like tons of love Beat Saber people are loving Beat Saber as well you have a thick one dude those things are loud as hell I hear PlayStations? No, yeah, the PlayStation 4, the fats, the old guys. Oh. They're a little bit loud. Or not. I want to see the Soldier Boy uh, controller. Um, just go to his game console. It's, like, f disgusting. Oh, my God. What? <laughs> is this real? <laughs> is that his? Hold on. I think it is, dude. Yeah, right? Isn't that can't be right. That's... Yeah. What? Is it the Fuse? Yeah. That is supposed to be like an exact like Xbox One controller. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. That looks dirty. Not a fan, boy. It's not a fan. Skyrim will be on the console. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that is so true. <laughs> so, uh, $399 price point. That was their sweet spot. Uh, the boss of Oculus Studios, Jason Rubin, was 
talking about how they could have lowered the screen resolution in the Oculus Rift S to and and lowered the price. They could have uh, gone full wireless, 100% wireless, uh, by just even like developing a dongle as well to like come in the box. But that would have raised that price point. So they really wanted to hit that $399 price point. I think that's a great price. Like personally, that's how much I my dad for Christmas paid for my Xbox 360 way back in the day. Really? That was that expensive? Three ninety nine. I have uh, the box at home. It has like a GameStop logo. Three ninety nine. Like their their little tag. You okay. Know? Okay. Okay. Uh, and then I mean the Switch was two ninety nine. I mean I think that three to four hundred dollar range is perfect. Um, so this is a little bit heavier than the Oculus Rift, but it's better balanced. Like the weight distribution is better. So like. If, I don't know if you guys uh, have, I keep forgetting who does, who doesn't have VR at home. You guys playing at home, uh, listeners. But I hear like it just kind of can get wear on to you, dude. When you have your goggles going like this, like if I it, can imagine, you're going to feel pretty top heavy, dude. Yeah. I mean, you've been walking around all day without something strapped to your head. Right. And suddenly now you have something strapped to your head. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I mean, like even an hour into playing like Beat Saber where you're just like, lightsabering like that rhythm game it looks fun as hell yeah uh, but anyway yeah the weight distribution is better uh and then increased blah 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 it's like they got a bunch it's just a way better system dude i was like thinking like i went to oculusrift.com or whatever you don't have to go there but i was looking at the photography man they make that oculus rift look so sexy their photography is nuts sure it's like some apple level i know what you mean though like you get like you look at these products and like their photography and stuff and then you get it at home and you're like (laughs) damn my fucking um surroundings didn't change at all i was still living a (laughs) shithole you know what i mean like (laughs) everything still looks shitty around me one of my favorites is from uh the Nintendo Switch like announcement trailer and it's like Becky on top of a roof downtown in like a five thousand dollar apartment in New York City playing Nintendo Switch on that rooftop when the sun's like setting. It's like <laughs> that's never gonna happen. Uh but yeah. <laughs> that's never gonna happen. I mean that'd be sick. I mean playing the Switch on the rooftop's the dream, right? I forgot to mention guys, the Oculus Rift S doesn't require this beast ass PC. So you, it's standalone, which sure. is huge, huge appeal. I mean, I don't know how the other big dogs in the biz can compete now. I mean, what's the other one? The you can tell me in the chat, guys. What's the other guy? The other one, HTC Vibe. That's supposed to be like the best, but it's like nine hundred dollars, and you have to have that beast compu- computer. Uh, and then I think we're missing one more. Obviously, the PlayStation VR, PSVR is like the weakest of them all, but it's the most easy as far as like entry point. Yeah, super hot, dude. Uh, Like I said, all the people that play VR, they mention these games that you guys are mentioning in the chat, and it's just like... Man, I want to I want to experience this. Super hot looks sick, man. Yeah. Like there's blast blast blast. Like it's like that's like um kind of Max Payne, right? Yeah. yeah, so in that vein of blast slow blast, mo- blast. Yeah, blast blast blast. Blast blast blast. I put pew 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 pistol peep. Damn. <laughs> do you want to chat about PewDiePie? I know it's not in our notes, but do you hear about No, we don't need to get into that. That's uh, a little bit weird. That's Oh, a- yeah, some dark shit. Yeah, some know. dark shit. Uh, okay, so Anthem is selling well on a yeah, I mean, I just put it in here just because, like, we've talked about Anthem a lot, just like we've talked about Apex Legends. What is up, Uber Gosu Pro? Happy to see you in the chat. Uh, yeah, we're about to dive in some Jackbox. We just have some quick things to discuss. Uh, so I just put it in here because, you know, we are talking about how you canceled your pre-order, right? Yeah. I didn't, and, like, I mean, yeah. And it's just, like, crazy. Like, these games aren't getting great reviews. But they're have well, Apex did. But they're having, and Kingdom Hearts did okay. But they're having, like, this awesome, like, takeoff. I mean, it's, like, the marketing behind it, and people, or people are just finding it fun. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people are falling into the trap that a grindy game is going to be fun, and then they get the grindy game and complain about it. You know what I mean? Right. These are games with big time investments, and once you get bored of the game, you might just be like, okay, negative review, I'm out. You know what I mean? But right. I think there were some problems with Anthem. Like the PS4 bricking rumor, we don't know if that was actual. So yeah, I, I just heard again that on a podcast I listened to that zero people actually got their PS4s bricked from Anthem, but it was doing the blue screen restart, hard restart thing. Sure, a ton. Yeah. But so, I mean, that's, that's just a patch, right? Yeah, definitely not a game or a system breaking problem right. that 
would really cause you to downrank a game, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, nothing's going to make you downrank a game harder than it destroying your system. But, uh, Divi- <clears throat> Div- Division... Division 2, The Division 2, that's been getting good ra- ratings yeah. and stuff. And did that game just come out Friday, or is it out this Friday? Uh, no, it's already out. It okay. came out at the 15th. Okay, so, cool. Um, people are loving it, dude. From what I hear, that's what a lot of people are playing. The people I listen to in the video game industry, that's what they're playing right now. Yeah, no, it's a... Uh, Really smooth gunplay, great cover, a little faster pace than the previous division. People like that you die faster, and that cha- fixes a lot of balancing issues. Yeah. Um, I was kind of surprised you weren't playing it when I came over today. Yeah, no, Fortnite's better, but like, <laughs> you know, I like I need to, I want to play it. But the other day, I had this huge, a big problem. It really, really bothered me. So I was streaming. It was at 3 p.m. and we were playing half hour. And it goes down for maintenance. I didn't know, like, at the time that it was going down for maintenance. And um, I I just thought it had crashed. And I was like, okay, let's watch YouTube videos and just kick it. Um, But then I find out that it was downtime maintenance. And it's, like, a very weird time. They didn't learn from any other online games where they do maintenance at, like, 5 a.m. When less people are on, like, 4 a.m., like, something like that. They put it down during... Big time, which I think is a bad sign. But oh, yeah. Just like a dumb decision by the game makers, especially this early into release. But yeah. Anyways, um, the game looks cool. I mean... So you bought got, it, though. Yeah, I, I already pre-ordered it. I've yeah. got several friends. So you have... One, how many with. games have you paid $60 for? Uh, this Division. Year? Um, just this year. Red Dead. Well, no, that wasn't this year, though. Okay. Division. Okay. So you and I are trying to keep each other in check, not trying to spend sixty dollars on every game that comes out. Like I, I, I wanted to get Resident Evil Two remake, but I decided not to. Hold off until it goes down. The other side of that coin, though, is I spent fifty dollars on. Oh, hey, thanks for the raid, Mossy. Appreciate it, dude. How's your stream, man? Um, so I spent fifty dollars on Magic Arena, and then I spent fifty dollars on Fortnite skins. So, like, that totally cancels out me not spending money at all. Man, we were talking about this this week. I want to play Magic Arena so bad, but it's only on PC. That's actually crazy to me that it uh, isn't on iOS. You know what I mean? Like, that's crazy. Spent 60 on Kingdom Hearts? Really? Oh, no. That doesn't seem like... uh, I've heard that game was good. Yeah, it got pretty good ratings from what I hear. Uh, People were having fun with it. How are you doing tonight, Sean? Oh, a bunch of two ones open to crisis. Hell yeah, baby. Spend five dollars to get an old PS4. Oh game. god, no man. <laughs> get out but you of have here. to play on those uh, old school PS2 controllers, feeling like Soldier Boy or yeah, something. Yeah. <laughs> All right, dude. So I guess that pretty much wraps up the show. Um, we're gonna pull up some Jackbox and. So while you're doing that, I'll just cap us off. So we have a clean break. From the Totally Games cast every Wednesday, guys, 4.30 p.m. Central Time, as you can see. This way, I'm still getting used to how it's opposite as me, but this way, you can follow us right here. You know that. Sean S. Johnson on everything. Totally Trey on pretty much everything. Uh, (laughs) But anyway, yeah, follow us. Talk to us about video games. If you're playing Apex Legends on PlayStation 4, come at me. Let's play together. I'll, I'll turn my mic on for you guys in the chat, you homies out there.